and a good bloody morning to you too welcome into a day in the life of a hgv class one driver my name is darren and i vlog monday to friday and upload it for you guys at 7 p.m on youtube and this is my little lovely beauty nemesis i'm not gonna lie though it's absolutely freezing today it's minus two at the moment and it's 4 30 in the morning yay the joys <laughs> but on a good note though big thank you to eric last night he parked up a truck so I finished at half past six last night and it's half past four now. So a 10 hour reduced stress. And he left a night heater on for me. So when I came in this morning, absolutely cold outside, nice and toasty inside. So nice one, Eric, cheers for that dude. Here is my night bag and I keep some extra food for tomorrow's dinner in there. Um, obviously my deodorants, towel and a spare pair of clothes. So that is gonna be used for tomorrow because tonight I'm staying out and there's my normal bag. So I've got quite a lot of gear with me nice cup of coffee first thing i need to do though is just hook up to the trailer do the vehicle checks on the trailer and then head off onto the road today is quite a long drive at the moment so i'm going first down to northampton it's probably about three to four hours drive give or take on traffic and then after that i've got milton Keynes, and then kempton in bedford and then hemel hempstead in hertfordshire First drop is three hours away and 139 miles. So I was getting some fuel now from Lim Services and I kind of learnt my lesson last time because last time I went down London, it was near impossible to try and get anywhere with uh, key fuels. So top up now and that will do me for the full journey. I don't have to worry about fuel then, do I? And plus, well, the amount of trucks what are just parked up and look like they've been abandoned at this place. It's crazy. Like coming in through the entrance, you got like weave where they passed all these parts up trucks where they just dropped it with like the, their hours are running low or something and you can see on the other side here now it's, it's absolutely rammed there's a couple of spaces there what people have left already but yeah it's a huge site anyway this one good few hundred easy hey everyone is asleep still uh time is now quarter to six and we're due to get there still for half past eight it only took about five or ten minutes then getting the fuel. Well, it's better to be safe than sorry though, isn't it? I always leave with a full tank, so at least I can get home without worrying. So if you remember, when I stayed out in uh, where they've done the Maidstone deliveries last time, I left here with half a tank. And I was like, I let them go. No, no, it's parked up. Yeah, it's parked up. So, um, yeah, I left Maidstone. Um, I had about a quarter of a tank left when I left Maidstone and everywhere on the M25 ring road and up the M40 didn't take key fuels and I literally got to Oxford services with I think it was like 30 or 40 miles left on the tank I was like oh no we got break down <laughs> I was dreading it just ringing up work saying sorry I can't get fuel oh, I'm going to have to stick 50 quid of my own money in it and then claim it back later on that would have been the worst case scenario but yeah i managed to find one just off the oxford services Woo. Yeah, that was close so yeah always fuel up before leaving <laughs> make sure you got a full belly less stops as possible that's what we need doesn't it when we're driving so long now 128 miles to go. Let's go. I think there's been an accident over here as well. All the traffic's come to a bit of a halt. They need some street lights down this way. It's so dark. I mean, how has somebody else not crashed into that? The way they've left it and it's getting towed. My word, it's 
what's next and waiting to happen, right? Where's the police or highway patrol people? Time is now 10 past seven. We've got 61 miles to go to her first drop. And welcome to Birmingham. <laughs> That's all you have to say really, isn't it? Birmingham M6, chocker. I'm not too sure which places were Birmingham or Warrington on the M6. It's Warrington on the M6, that's a strong contender, isn't it? And both of them are worse than the M25, I believe, personally. Especially at this time of day. And for accidents as well, bloody hell. Constantly having accidents up and down this motorway, aren't there, people? I don't know how, it's a nice straight motorway. We have to do, pay attention, keep your safe distance. Jobs are good, then. Everybody goes home safely. Unfortunately, though, it doesn't happen like that, does it? It's like on um, last week's vlog, or it might have been a week before, where I was in Birmingham and you had that van going down, like in between the hard shoulder, well, the slip road and the slow lane. It's absolutely ridiculous. I don't know how he didn't take any mirrors off, to be honest. But yeah, standard of driving around here, that isn't it, unfortunately. Not everybody, but you know, it's a high amount of reckless drivers around Birmingham region. Again, not everybody. <laughs> uh, we've got signs on for 40 miles an hour. Don't know if that's just for congestion or is it going to be an accident or anything. Since it starts to speed up a little bit, it's probably congestion. job it is currently 10 to 9 in the morning there's um, two loading bays so it's, that's not too bad there's one truck going on now and then I'll be the next one into the second bay so it shouldn't be too long hopefully there's only five pallets to get taken off as well so it should be quite quick turn around uh, fingers crossed for that because you never know things can always go wrong can't they job number two is only 30 minutes away driving so it's not too bad 21 miles um, however, I need to take a break before 10 o'clock, well, 10.30 anyway, for me working time directive. So that's the perfect time to take it because I've got a service station just there. And I'm not booked in until 11 o'clock, so that'll kill a little bit of time then having a break. Safety first. Change of plan. I'm going to have my dinner here instead because there's a big lay-by right on the road where I've just came out of, you can see. So it's just perfect. And since it's dry, it's not too cold at the moment, it's warmed up a little bit, and there's no wind, it's perfect for cooking dinner. Let's get that lit. Fill that up with water. You're thinking, what's he cooking today? Always dispose of your rubbish responsibly. For today's dinner, hot dogs. Wash on the road as well, you got all not only look after your mental health you've also got to look after your body as well so you can't see mcdonald's and burger king all the time or greg's pasties because before you know it you've put 10 stone on especially when you're doing long distance driving a lot you're not really doing a lot of exercise so when you're eating it you're not burning off the calories so hot dogs simple in a pan you just get a little camping stove it's the cheap as well so it saves in your wallet and you know, they're quite satisfying, aren't they? There's quite a good feel about eating hot dogs. I don't know about you, but I love them. I really do. There goes one. And two. They look about done. You can't deny they don't look good. The only problem is I've only got brown sauce. Normally I'd have a bit of ketchup or mustard. But yeah, I think brown sauce is better than no sauce, I suppose. 
So that's that. Remind myself to pick up some red sauce sachets. Right, taste test verdict. Hmm. The time is five past ten. I'm due to get to the next place. Where are you going, buddy? It's not a one-way system. <laughs> I'm due to get to the next place at uh, 10.35, so half hour drive, 20 miles. It shouldn't be too bad. If the day carries on the way it is now, I might actually make it back in time. <laughs> Who knows? With an extended hour, I could possibly make it. And then it might not be a night out. I always hope for the best, but you know, you never know with driving what could be happening around a corner. So I'm planned for the night out, but if I can make it home, I'll make it home. If it's 15 hour day, so be it, so be it, but I'd rather be nice and warm in my bed instead of freezing in a truck tonight, that's for sure. I mean, to be honest, I'll probably get a better sleep in the truck because I won't have a little man coming in the room at two o'clock in the morning doing bloody Jackie Chan kicks inside of my head. Little bugger. <laughs> He's such a restless sleeper, though, that kid. He really is. My word. So he goes to sleep in his own bed, okay. But then about two o'clock in the morning, he'll get up, wander into ours, get into our bed, and then that's it. Bloody kung fu time and bloody whacking you in your face and in your back and everything. So after two o'clock, like bloody hell, sleep's awful. Uh, what else about to say? Oh, wow, that was it, yeah. So the clients I've just been to then, big up to the FOT guys. I had five pallets to get taken off. I had three forklift drivers unloading me at once. I was in and out within 30 seconds, literally my bum touched the seat because you got to um, go inside your cab at this place for like health and safety. You can't stand outside next to your truck. So, got in the cab. I literally had like, right, go mate, you're done. <laughs> so, that's the way it should be, isn't it? If you have like two forklift drivers with the double arms what can lift two pallets at once, you're laughing, aren't you? In and out very quickly. Where some places, that I've been to in the past to take like three or four pallets off. I've been there like half hour. Where it's just one driver taking them off at a time, checking each individual thing on the eight pallets and stuff. Ugh. And that what backlogs your day then, doesn't it? Because you're just chasing your tail all day. So yeah, three forklifts, two minutes, if that, to get all the pallets took off. Bloody great. So I am half hour ahead at the moment at my little schedule so we turn up to this place booked in for 11 o'clock rock up at half 10 go inside hopefully i'll be leaving before 11 o'clock if not around 11 o'clock and then i've just got to drive then to bedford and then the uh hamel hempstead i think it is the top of my head Okay, these go, let me get across. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it can be quite tricky as well when you're driving. So fellow class one drivers would, um, would understand this. It's like when you're driving down the road and you're trying to move over to your middle lane and you're looking in your mirror and you're thinking, right, that's quite close there. And the car, you can see the car in the middle lane. They've not flashed yet to let you in but they've slowed down to give you enough space. And sometimes when you're looking in the mirror, that car looks a little bit too close to the back of your trailer, even though there's plenty of space, but in the mirror, it looks like there's not enough space for you to pull over. Or if you go pull over, you might cut them up. So if you ever do want to let a driver, a HGV driver into another lane in front of you, just give them a little flash just to reassure them that there is enough space between you and the trailer which is going to be coming across the last thing i want to do is cut a driver up thinking they're giving way to me but they're not because they're in on the phone or in a world of their own really driving around which does happen as well sometimes so you need to be careful with that 
So I was giving like a little flash or something, let them know. Especially when it's dark as well, it's hard to judge that distance sometimes. When you're on a motorway with no street lights. Just about to join the M1 southbound. Ah, that sun is really bright. Mate, don't do that, dick. <laughs> My word, right, literally, they're not even paying attention. I've seen them in the mirror looking at each other, and if I didn't move over then to the little bit of the hard shoulder bit on the slip road, they would just would have drove right into the side of my truck. And now they're doing less than 50 miles an hour. Come on, buddy. Put your foot down. See as well, they're not even paying attention to what they're doing. Oh, I'll keep safe distance, I'm sure they'll speed up in a minute. My words, come out of nowhere, this fuck. It's nice and clear a minute ago. I don't know if the camera's picking it all up, right? But bloody hell. <laughs> Coming through it at night time, like bloody pea suit. Yeah, really thick. It's like one of them scenes from a horror film, isn't it? Where it just thick, thick fog just rolls in out of nowhere and then it disappears again. <laughs> That's a little bit odd. This time of day as well, 20 past 10. I have actually been this place before. I didn't think I had when I looked at the name, but seeing where it is on the sat nav, I have actually been here. And I think they were pretty quick as well when I got unloaded. So I should be okay getting unloaded early as well, which is good. No way to limit down here because I've been down this way before. It's a mile and a quarter. <laughs> Instead of going all the way around the estates, it's cut straight through, it's alright. This road can't be a 60, surely. Saturn I've seen it is. I thought it would have been a 40. No, nope, national speed limit, yeah. 60 it is. Give her half to ring in, so which she wants. Two down, two to go. Dog number three, 16 miles, 30 minute drive. It was the place that I've been before. I actually second guessed myself because the postcode took me to one of the units over this way instead. So I then had to come back on myself here and I drove in. I was like, ah, yeah, I do actually recognize this place. Been here once before. That's an old one, is it? Look at this Jeep. Like an old army Jeep. Max speed, 40 miles per hour. No, that can't be right. That's what it says on the back of the, the sheeting on the roof. I mean, it looks pretty cool though, doesn't it? Is it just me though, or is it quite wonky? It's literally like that, the roof. I think it's a bit wonky. It's like the whole frame's been pushed over to one side. Right, I'll see now actually if it goes more than 40 miles per hour. He's put his foot down, They're giving it some willy. I think it could possibly be an American import as well. I think he's a left hand drive. By the looks of it. I mean, it's pretty frigging cool, like, but I don't know if it's got an MOT. <laughs> it's leaving me for 
to dust, that's for sure. Next job is to do four pallets, I think it is. And then I've got 10 pallets on the final one. I'm currently at Milton Keynes at the moment. In that region anyhow. Just cruising down the A421 at the moment. Fog, again, it's just come out of bloody nowhere. Six miles until a third destination, and I'm out a ten minute drive. I don't want to jinx myself just yet by saying anything, but I might say it later on. <laughs> if you think, if you know what I'm going for saying, I think you know. Ah! Come on, car, speed up, speed up. Man! It's alright. But they had a car and a van on the right hand side the lane, wasn't letting me out. I tried moving over. I need to get back over now and the car's bloody trying to undertake me. Let it hell. I think I might have been to this place as well if I'm going to, because I do reckon, obviously I've been down this, this road quite a few times to Bedford. I don't really recognise the business name off the top of my head. But I feel like I've been here before, definitely. About a mile and a half away now. Only about a five minute drive, if that. I think it might be even closer, to be honest with you. Looking on sat up early, it looked like I come off this junction, it's pretty much straight ahead. weather is really really weird because it's got like nice and sunny at the moment on this section but literally 200 yards ago it's really really thick fog really strange really strange and it's only showing at one degrees but it feels a lot warmer than just the one degree Especially compared to yesterday, bloody hell. Yesterday was absolutely Baltic. I believe it started to snow as well in some areas last night. I've not seen any signs of it this morning myself. A lot of frost, but that's about it really. And I'm looking for Woburn Road Industry Estate, that's the one. Uh, should be up just up here. Lots of roundabouts, which is quite unnecessarily really, isn't it? <laughs> Especially just on this little section round here. Right, seven and a half ton zone except for loading. Right. Where am I gonna be? Where's the business that I'm looking for? been to this place before again I recognize this road oh, that's weird 
I wonder if it's the small unit which I had to reverse into that time. No, I don't think it is that one. All I've got for the address is on this estate. There's no numbers or anything. So I'm hoping the postcode is pretty much going to take me there. that city plumbing? No. no. I don't think it's that. Do, 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 do. Right. I'm going to try down here. Because this looks like somewhere that I've been before. And it doesn't look like it's down that way. Uh, I might have to pull over, do a little bit of Google Maps. I thought it might be down there to reverse down. Doesn't look like it. Oh God, it's how tight that, isn't it? Jeez. Right, if I turn left, then reverse it down there, should be all right. God, why's not adding like unit numbers on it? It does my nothing when it's like this. Gotta be careful with the left hand side. Got the van. So we can't turn too sharp. We'll try and jack knife turn it. Didn't see any bollards anywhere. Textbook. <laughs> All right, let's pull over here on the left hand side. I might have to give it a little bit of a Google map. So I found the place, however, it leads to a dead end when you drive past it. So I've tried to spin around. Uh, so I've got to try and reverse back as much as I can. And then I've seen a yard, just pretty much straight down. I think we'll be a little bit cheeky. I'm gonna see if we can get in their yard, but they put yellow posts up, you see, to try and stop people driving in the yard, I think. <laughs> little buggers. Don't think I'll be able to get, get around that, actually. That's the uh, blind side. It was all going so well, wasn't it? Got careful of these cars, the headboard needs to swing out. Give them a little knock. Got around the corner, all right. So he's straight himself up, and the unit is on my left-hand side, passenger side, about 100 yards or so. Where that truck's just come out of. They do make it fun though, sometimes some of these places you've got to deliver to. I'm going to have to reverse out onto the main road, which didn't look great because there's cars parked bloody everywhere, and I mean everywhere. Should be me 
about here. Yeah, that's the one. So here we are now outside. The customer is just on the left hand side of this little gate here. As you see, there's not a lot of space. So I'm going to, in a minute, pull forward when they're ready for me, anyway, because there's a van there. Uh, pull forward about where that grid is and then start offloading me just so there's enough space for people to get her off on and off around the path job free done and uh, i've got to say it's a bloody nice little day out here today i've got a bit of a problem though because i'm parked right down there and i've got to get down here so i've got to reverse it down and around this corner which is not gonna be fun so i'll be honest i don't think i'll be able to reverse down that section Instead, I'm going to have to go down there until I find somewhere to river, turn around. Not going to be fun. So if you ever got to do like a tight manoeuvre, especially reverse, just get out, have a little bit of a recon check, walk down, make sure you know where all your hazards are, etc. before committing to the move. The last thing you want to do is get yourself stuck. Unfortunately, I had to come down this way due to where the client was. I need to try and keep it close to this car in the corner. This red one. But I have to bear in mind the headboard swing and make sure the headboard doesn't swing out and hit one of the fences as I make the turn because it's going to be coming out quite a bit. Yeah, the sun's in it out, I know that for a fact. So, I need to come this way. I've got a car on my passenger side as well, so I need to try and do a little bit of a blind reverse at the same time. Make sure the headboard doesn't hit. See that alright? So I'll try and straighten up. Now oh, where's that van going? Do you know what I mean? I mean, people can see them reversing and then they're still come, still coming down. That grey car. Come on mate, wave it down. So that grey van just then, instead of waiting like this guy did, he decides it'd be a good idea to, you know, just try and drive around me instead. Let the AA guy pass. And now I need to do a blind reverse that way. Well, it's quite a big street anyway, because it's where we came out from, the way it looks like. I need to be careful with this part of the truck. Make sure I don't get too close to it. And there is a couple of ballards into the street that I'm turning. So I'm keeping it close as I can to the curb and passenger side. Just got to straighten it up. Dangling my arm out, aren't I? <laughs> Waving everybody past. Right, so that's me done there. Got enough space to go forward. Away we go. Final job just under an hour and it's 32 miles away let's go just about to pull up to the final job currently quarter past one doing quite good for timing at the moment and i'm looking at about three and a half maybe four and a half hours driving time left Ooh, i might be able to make it back if the traffic's good <laughs> I've gone and jinxed myself now, haven't I? 
That's it, I'm screwed. Traffic's gonna be horrendous all the way down. Right, where are you? Looks like we've got another business which is hidden within the estate somewhere. Um, so far, I've gone down about three different dead ends trying to locate it. Postcode takes me into like the car part of this building, uh, but they've got a barrier you can't get in, no height barrier. And then I've been down that way, past the dead end, so I've just had to reverse all the way from down there into the road. <laughs> so fingers crossed, it's going to be a nice big area that I've not seen yet. So it looks like it's in there. As you can see, not great access to get because you've got this car parked on the corner you've got that car parked on the corner it's just there can't really swing it down i presume that car has crashed into that one but it's just been left on the side of the road but where we're coming from is right down on that left hand turn then reversing all the way down here so from down there and then i've got to get past all of this to that unit in the corner great yeah safe to say it's gonna be a bloody tricky one this one so I've just spoke to the office now, trying to give him a bit of an update and God, I can't even turn around either down this way. I just think to myself, if I get down this way, turn around and come back, I might be able to come in at a different angle, reverse it in. But it's tight, a bit too tight. The new plan of action is hopefully get into there and I should be able to spin it around on the spot over there to come back out and then reverse it into that street which leads up to the business. The main problem is if I can get the swing around without that car getting damaged. Uh, it's just because that bloody thing's parts on the corner. I also could come round on the curb and then swing it round. Because that bloody thing's there, I can't. Oh, the joys. Right, let's give this a try. Oh God. Right, so if this car here on the right hand side wasn't here, I could mark the curb and swing it in. Thing is they've got a truck yard down at the end so they've got to be able to get in and out somehow but i need to make sure my tail swing of the trailer doesn't hit either so if i go right up to here i think i'm just missing it i'll be honest if you hit it you wouldn't be able to notice then anyway, will you right okay i've got in i've got in Right, okay. It wasn't as bad as I thought. But now I've got to get into the left hand side. Right, luckily he was in his car. So that's one car sitting on the corner out of the way. Oh god, I don't think he's going to get his car back. I've flat grass though. Right, I'm in. I'm in. Right, I'm thinking, can I spin it on the spot here though? Um, I'm thinking no. <laughs> When I'm looking at sticking my head out of the trail, I'm like, yeah, my trailer's a little bit too big for that. Okay, if I park it here, like so, I can get unloaded both sides and hopefully I might be able to just reverse it to where that guy parked his car on the grass. Getting all successful, don't know how, pretty tight. But I've got to get out now, so let's reverse, hopefully, to that gate over there and then drive straight out. Just make sure the headboard doesn't swing and hit any of the cars back up. Oh, 
Ah, lovely. Just got back. Hard left turn. Uh, swing it to the right. To the unit and trailer. They're both lined up. Perfect. Fiesta, that's disappeared, so that's good. Wouldn't have made that turn otherwise. Let's get out of here! Here you go, Ryan. Finally got rid of the little sticky bit. Oh, cheers for reminding me, mate, because I keep forgetting about it. Then the other day I was like, right, okay, put a Stanley knife in my bag. I'm going to tackle this sticker today. Now, I'm not trying to jinx myself by saying this. However, I've just took my 45 minute break to extend my driving time. So I've got three hours and 24 minutes left for today. It's three hours driving till I get back home to the yard. Will I do it? Will I get there in time? Hopefully, but I've got to get past Birmingham. That could add an extra hour onto my journey straight away. <laughs> it's currently half past three, so fingers crossed and wish me luck. Not taking any more breaks now, so let's see how far north I can get. These stick near forward as much as I can see. So it's a pain in the backside getting out of this service station. Uh, just in case you're wondering, I'm at Northampton Services. Just about to leave now. They're not too bad, them services. They've got McDonald's, Costa, and um, some other food place. <laughs> the Great Smiths. It's your basic standard ones, really. But the car park for HCVs is really small. You can only fit about 12 HCVs in there. So if you get there, say, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, you're screwed in parking spaces. You can't get anywhere. So now, I've got three and a half hours to get as close as to home as I can. Hopefully I'll get towards Nutsford, but however, Nutsford is quite similar situation to the one I've just come from. It is not a lot of space in there for parking. So the phrase comes to mind, the early bird gets the worm. Or in our case, the early driver gets the space. looking all right it's still quite nice and uh, blue to the left dark and cloudy to the right <laughs> hopefully it won't be too cold tonight the temperature won't drop hopefully too much but I've got a night heater so I'm all good for, um, for that side of things keeping warm got my sleeping bag got my pajamas so yeah I should hopefully be all right And if we can't get a parking space on the services, if you're wondering what else I can do, um, I might be able to pull off one of the junctions on the motorway, the M6, and then try and find like a lay-by, which is just off the M6. Hopefully, um, that's worst case scenario. But luckily I've got a five litre bottle of water, which you always keep in the truck. So if you ever do truck driving, it's always worth keeping a big bottle of water inside your cab whether it be like a two litre or even a five litre like I get from Tesco's like one pound sixty or something definitely worth just keeping in your cab 
so that you got drinks when you need it. If you pull over anywhere, get some cordial, throw it into a jar or a jug, I should I say, and then you know you got some juice then to drink. Or alternatively, if you've got a camping stove like I have, I can then use it for um, boiling water. So then I can make a pot noodle because I always have three or four pot noodles in the cab as well. So if I ever get stuck somewhere where I can't get to the services, at least if I pull over, I've got food, I don't know, I've got like a pot noodle I can just cook up. So that's the worst case scenario backup plan anyway. Even if you don't do long distance driving, it's always worth just keeping in stuff like that in your cab. So if you don't bring your dinner for whatever reason one day, you don't have any money because you're like a few days before payday, you got some dinner on you, haven't you, all the time, you're not going to go hungry. It's all about forward planning in this game. So this is Birmingham part two. Generally, for the last five or six miles, it's just been, it's been like this. But Leanne likes to jibber on quite a lot, so for the last 40 minutes, actually, I've been like this. So that's how long I've been on the phone for it for. <laughs> so I've had to cut all that out. Um, yeah, so Birmingham. It's crap to drive through. <laughs> and this is what's causing me now to um, think I'm not going to be, definitely not going to be getting home tonight. I've got two hours driving still. And I've got two hours left until I get back to the depot. But I'm thinking I might get up to about Stafford. Because um, I've been there since four o'clock this morning. I'm starting to get a bit knackered and that, so I might as well just get past Birmingham, pull up somewhere before the rush gets there as such, before it gets too busy, and then have the night out in Stafford, I'm hoping. So hopefully I should be there for about half past five, which is a good time to knock it on the head, isn't it, for the day. And then tomorrow morning, get up for um, five o'clock, and then, leave for about half five six o'clock maybe to go back to warrington so it should only take an hour to get back back at the yard for about seven half seven and then i can crack on with the day what they need me to do so that's my plan anyway park up nice and early get a good spot so i can get straight out early in the morning i'm not blocked in and stuff Because the problem is, if you leave it past half five, maybe six o'clock, trying to find a parking space and the services, it's next to impossible in a lot of them. Because they don't hold a lot of trucks, so it's first come, first serve. But yeah, I just wanted to get Birmingham out of the way first. So that is the plan of action, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just gonna try Stafford services see if there's any spaces for me it's currently half past five so that's 13 hours done if there was any space here by the time I've parked up got myself sorted out you're looking at 13 and a half hour shift six o'clock finish These are quite a big surfaces to prefer. So I'm hoping they've got plenty of space. Ideal, I should have been here for five. Any schedule 035076 has been added to your list of schedules. No need to action this right now, but please check your schedule oh. list at your earliest Yeah, there's plenty of spaces there. anything that I can anywhere I can go I won't mind underneath these lights here on the right hand side nicely lit up isn't it up 
perfect. Oh wait, no, it's a little short there. Um, do you want to I'm park it on the right hand side? Just has to reverse back a little bit. I'm getting that little space. So the reason why I've parked it there is there's loads of space for these trucks to still get out but because I'm underneath the lights the trailer's empty but the fuel tank it saves the risk of any fuel theft because nobody's going to start siphoning fuel whilst it's out in the open whereas if I've parked in one of these lanes somebody could come at the side and just take your fuel quite easily Also I don't really want to get blocked in the morning because I want to get up nice and early leave for about half past five to hit the road and don't want to get blocked in by another truck. So I'm just going to settle down for the night and go have some dinner. So I've got my dinner here now, cost me 95p, check this out. Nice chicken katsu curry, a bit of uh, sticky rice underneath. More like a soup really, that isn't it? But yeah, you can't complain for 95p though. Uh, the reason why it's 95p is when you stay over at services, you get a £10 food voucher, which you claim back. So. It's not bad though, is it? When I just paid the extra, so it was 10 95 and I just paid 95 p for it. Bloody hell, the place has got full already. Already got a neighbour as well. So that's me done for the night. I've got myself hot chocolate from Greg's. It's a cold night, I might as well have a nice warm drink to finish it off with. So that's the bed set up for the night. Got my little pillows over there. Yeah, just a little sleeping bag basically, really basic. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like, comment and subscribe if you are new to the channel. And big thank you for everybody that watches, I really do appreciate it guys. I'll be back on Monday for more vlogs at 7pm on UK time on YouTube. So take care of yourself and as always, stay safe and stay awesome. Bye for now.